There are lots of reasons big corporations merge. Operating economics, growth, tax evasion and diversification top these reasons. But these mergers sometimes come at a cost for every stakeholder and even for the environment in which we live. Today, we're going to look at why and how Dow Chemical and DuPont decided to become one giant corporation, Dow DuPont. The duo is among the oldest companies in America. Dow Chemical and DuPont have served as reliable scientific ingenuity in the new millennium. As a result of the planned merger, shares of the American industry giants Dow and DuPont ceased trading at the end of the New York Stock Exchange on August 31st, 2017. Several professional institutional bodies have weighed the pros and cons of the merger of the two industry giants. And this is what we will show you in this video. So grab your favorite drink and let's go for a ride. Let's start with a brief history of the individual companies, Dow Chemicals and DuPont. Dow Chemical Company is an American plastic and chemical manufacturing company and one of the world's leading suppliers of chemical, artificial fibers, and plastic products. You know the process of constantly pouring out all forms of plastics surely would have an impact on the environment. The company was formed by Midland chemist Herbert H. Dow in 1897. Herbert formed Dow Chemicals to support the Midland Chemical Company, which was finding it hard to dispose of its waste and meet the teeming demand. Soon, Dow Chemicals began extracting other compounds such as chlorides, magnesium, and calcium from Michigan's abundant brine reserves. This extraction was done because Herbert Dow wanted a bleach plant to utilize waste from Midland Chemical Bromine extraction procedures. Good plan, isn't it? Let's see where this ends. While the vast majority of Dow products were safe and everyone loved the convenience it provided, a few received negative press and have been the subject of lawsuits. For example, during World War I, the business produced mustard gas, a lethal blistering agent used in chemical warfare. It created napalm, a jellied explosive that was reportedly used indiscriminately against civilians and soldiers during the Vietnam War. Dow was also one of several companies that manufactured Agent Orange, a defoliant laced with the deadly chemical dioxin. You can notice how the company's aim quickly shifted from preventing waste to the environment to creating chemicals that can kill humans. To make up for the effect of their deadly Agent Orange, Dow and other chemical firms agreed to establish a $180 million fund for veterans and the families of soldiers exposed to Agent Orange in an out-of-court settlement in 1984. In another sneaky move, Dow Corning, a joint venture of Dow Chemical and materials maker Corning Inc., filed bankruptcy in 1995, following a flood of lawsuits alleging that Dow Corning and other businesses' silicone breast implants were to blame for a range of health concerns. Dow Corning was put into bankruptcy protection in June 2004, and the claims were dropped in 2005. Victims of Agent Orange in Vietnam launched a lawsuit in 2005 against Dow Chemical and the Monsanto Company, an agricultural biotechnology firm that also supplied Agent Orange to the military. The action, however, was later dropped. No reason whatsoever why it was dropped. Currently, Dow Chemical Company employs tens of thousands of people throughout the world and has manufacturing facilities in over 150 countries. Artificial grass, golf ball, and other recreation equipment materials, adhesives, packaging products, wire, cable coatings, insulation, building materials, herbicides and insecticides, and chemicals used in pharmaceutical and automotive industries are among the company's products. Styrofoam insulation and the insecticide Lorsban are two of its more well-known products. Now that we have a brief history of Dow Chemicals, let's take a look at its partner. DuPont is also an American corporation just like Dow Chemicals. DuPont is engaged primarily in biotechnology and the manufacturer of chemicals and pharmaceuticals. DuPont was founded in 1802 by Eleuther Irene DuPont in Delaware. They started producing black powder and later other explosives, which remained the company's main products until the 20th century, when it began to make many other chemicals. The company discovered that a good prospect for business in America would be the milling of gunpowder. 
Returning to Paris, Eleuther Irénée Dupont found investors, and in 1880, Dupont began manufacturing nitroglycerin and dynamite. Blasting powders for industries, mines, and quarries were becoming more critical, and in 1857, the company produced a soda powder that was the first strictly industrial explosive. In 1907, it became the target of a U.S. antitrust suit because of its near monopoly of the American explosives industry. And in 1912, DuPont was forced to relieve itself of a significant portion of its gunpowder business. In 1917, the company began buying an interest in General Motors corporations and owned 25% of the stock at the end of 1925. In 1962, after 13 years of antitrust litigation, DuPont was ordered to relieve GM stock. In many ways, DuPont contributed to the American effort to win World War II. Later, DuPont established an atomic bomb research center in Hanford, Washington. DuPont's string of successes came to a halt in the mid-1970s, when the demand for artificial fibers began to decline and the cost of raw materials increased. DuPont's concentration on rebuilding its old business, rather than branching out into new areas, cost it dearly. Moreover, a recession in 1980 hurt the company. In that same year, however, the development of a product called Kevlar brought renewed success. The company, moreover, began to branch out from stock chemicals and petrochemical-based fibers into the life sciences, taking on such fields as genetic engineering and the manufacturer of heart medications and the cancer-fighting drug interferon. In addition, DuPont took part in the development of pesticides and electronics parts supplies. By the mid-1980s, DuPont owned about 90 businesses that sold a wide range of products. In the late 1980s, however, management at DuPont decided that the company should begin concentrating on its most profitable areas, oil, healthcare, electronics, and specialty chemicals. In the 1980s, DuPont acquired Conoco Incorporated in what was the largest merger in corporate history. Additional mergers were undertaken in DuPont's effort to diversify further. In 1986, the company introduced its stain-resistant Stainmaster carpets, which were soon the best-selling carpet brand in the United States. DuPont entered the global seed market in 1999 with Pioneer Hybrid International, the first commercial producer of hybrid seed corn. DuPont subsequently became one of the world's largest producers of hybrid and genetically engineered seed plants. Currently, DuPont now makes a broad array of industrial chemicals, synthetic fibers, petroleum-based fuels and lubricants, pharmaceuticals, building materials, sterile and specialty packing materials, cosmetics ingredients, and agricultural chemicals. It has plants, subsidiaries, and affiliates worldwide. DuPont has also caused some harm to the environment, releasing toxic waste into drinking water. This happened in the year 2004. The company was fined $16.5 million by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. The fine was for violating the Toxic Substances Control Act, TSCA, by withholding information concerning its release into drinking water in West Virginia of perfluorooctanoic acid, PFOA, also known as C8, causing developmental problems in laboratory animals. The company also faced litigation in an investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, in connection with that incident. In 2006, DuPont and seven other companies agreed with the EPA to cut their production of PFOA by 95% by 2010 and to eliminate production by 2015. In 2015, DuPont merged with Dow to create Dow DuPont and split into three companies. Now let's interpret the reason for this merger. Ever since times past, the two companies have been facing pressure from activist investors because of stagnation resulting from intense price competition, subdued commodity prices, currency challenges, and bloated cost structures. Both companies have seen their revenues fall over the last few years because of low crop prices, resulting in decreased demand, competitive pressure, strengthening of the U.S. dollar, and falling oil prices. These challenging market conditions and, of course, business greed have prompted other players to pursue inorganic growth opportunities too. The merger will help the transaction produce run rate cost synergies of around $3 billion and approximately $1 billion in growth synergies. By merging the highly complementary portfolios of Dow and DuPont and subsequently creating intended industry leaders, 
Dow DuPont expects to maximize value for all its stakeholders. Shareholders are expected to benefit from the more robust, focused investment profile of each intended company and substantial cost synergies and low-term growth and sustainable value creation following the intended separations into three independent companies. Consumers and the American people will be left to lick off their consequences without their voice being heard. Although the merger claims that customers will benefit from superior solutions and expanded product offerings. But no one can really quantify the negative environmental effect and toxic waste that will plague users of products from this giant corporation. Each of the individual companies may be required to shed a percentage of their staff to reduce running costs. These are just a few of the negative impacts the merger would have on the American people. Meanwhile, since the merger has lasted so far, Dow DuPont has four business segments constructed from former DuPont and Dow businesses. Transportation and advanced polymer, except for electronics and imaging, safety and construction, and nutrition and biosciences. These businesses combined for $22.6 billion in sales in 2018. That's a whole sum. It's becoming obvious that the reason for the merger has been to increase the size of their lust for profit and not to protect the environment. The deal is the biggest in 2015, a year that also saw a record number of deals. So far, companies have struck some $4.4 trillion of takeovers, eclipsing 2007 as the full year on record for deals. The deal has strong industrial logic and will create distinct financial profiles and a clear investment thesis for each business. The deal may be a win for customers, as it will result in three subsidiary independent companies, each with a clear focus, scale advantages, and an enhanced ability to deliver superior solutions. The combined company would sell about 41% of U.S. corn seeds and related genetics. Under the terms and conditions of the merger, Dow and DuPont shareholders will each own about 50% of the combined group, based on an existing ratio of one DuPont share for every Dow share and 1.282 Dow DuPont shares for every DuPont share. The dividend policy will be consistent with current policies at both companies. The combined entity would maintain two head offices in Dow's hometown of Midland, Michigan, and DuPont's Wilmington, Delaware. The pact will lead to $3 billion in cost savings as the combined entity is expected to eliminate 10% of the same kind of R&D activities, optimize the supply chain, use Dow's low-cost feedstock platform to reduce a lot of operation costs. The company's management has stated that with $3 billion of cost savings, the company could unlock value worth $30 billion for shareholders in the future. The combined entity will create a more robust and broader geographical presence. With a focused approach, it plans to increase revenue growth by leveraging its vast client base. It would generate around 40% of the domestic market in North America and 42% from EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa markets. The rest, 18%, would come from Asia and Latin America. The two companies have considerable product synergy in the agricultural business. DuPont has the germplasm and breeding product, which are industry leaders, and Dow Chemical has a stronghold in traits and crop protection. In fact, after the merger, DuPont will have a complete portfolio of germplasm and crop protection with almost a 50% contribution from each. So how the outcome of this merger may affect us, affect competition and their business operation? The merger will produce three subsidiaries. Firstly, Dow, which will make commodity chemicals like polyethylene, silicone, and paint additives along with other products. Secondly, DuPont. DuPont will specialize in specialty chemicals like advanced plastics, adhesives, and enzymes for the end markets, including cars, consumer goods, and electronics. Lastly, Corteva will be making agricultural seeds, traits, and chemicals. The focus here is that the three subsidiaries from this merger will be more customer-driven as they are loosely organized around agricultural chemicals, material science, and specialty chemicals and products. Company leaders say they will be leaner, less bureaucratic, and able to deliver more customer-driven innovation by breaking up into smaller subsidiaries. With a customer-driven approach, innovations will be more profitable and meaningful to their customers. This will be good in the short term for both shareholders and customers. 
but a customer-driven approach alone will not provide a means to save the environment from the waste their company produces. There are two likely outcomes for this merger and divestiture. If the three companies adopt a maintenance innovation approach, spending little to develop new platforms or markets, then long-term results will suffer. On the bright side, smaller specialty companies and other competitors will have a window for innovation and greater access to a very skilled workforce that they can leverage from excellent new growth opportunities. The other possible scenario is that the new companies will be smaller, leaner, and more ready for a truly balanced innovation approach. These companies may now have the capability to do some innovation projects previously slowed by bureaucracy and overly complex product development processes. It is possible that, in this scenario, we will see a rebirth of innovation in these more focused and agile companies. All chemical companies should strive for a balanced innovation approach, taking into account the need to protect the communities where they are located. This allows them to continually produce innovative, high-profit products that allow for long-term growth. There is a risk of betting the future on the all-new platforms or new market opportunities because it is untested or even unknown ground. However, a truly balanced innovation approach helps executives to manage the future better. So, does this merger mark the death of R&D in America? Probably not, but it is another nail in the coffin. In the light of these facts, the merger is not good news for farmers, the food system, or the environment, as this means the coming together of the world's two largest corporations, which will lead to the determinant of healthy living for the people of America, and maybe the whole industrialized world at large. Think about it, just how much of the global market is this new company going to control? According to recent research, they'll control 17% of the 40% of the soybean and corn production, with 17% of all global pesticides market. They run the food supply for the industrialized world, not just in the US, but also in the entire world. This will give them unprecedented power over America's people's way of life. This automatically means they control what people eat, where, or products they use and what is being grown or circulated by the entity. With Dow Agric Science Division, they are basically in charge of how much consumers should know and if they should or should not hoard information from the general public. How much power can one company hold? With all these controls, even the government may not have a say against any wrong activities perpetrated by the Dow DuPont individual companies. History has it that DuPont has been fined, sued, almost more times than any other company operating in the United States. With the merger, they may become less able to get reined in by the governments, oversight, or the citizens, and there will be no rules for them to adhere to. There are a bunch of environmental disasters that need to be handled in modern chemical production, and serious innovations are required in order to do this properly. But with all mega giga corporations, there's always a possibility of political influence and anti-environmental lobbying. Will air and water pollution, loss of lives and property, whereas the culprit gets away by paying menial fines, become the order of the day in the American people? Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like and consider subscribing. Also, share this video with your friends if you feel so, and please put your opinion down in the comments. We desperately need your feedback. See you in two weeks. Good luck.